Right. Uh, today we're going to talk about forearm torque, which is kind of a, I would say, dark corner of uh, the jiu-jitsu world. Uh, specifically, we'll be talking about how to use forearm torque in strangles. But first, uh, just to give some context, I'll sort of state the general principle uh, and then show a few specific examples. So we'll start with a, a real-life scenario of how you might use forearm torque in jiu-jitsu. And we're, we'll start from standing. Uh, so, uh, Shivang is going to make a uh, collar grip right here. <clears throat> All right. So, what problem am I trying to solve in this situation? For most throws, my hips need to be closer to his hips. I need to close this distance. Uh, the question is how. He's, he's framing me out. So, uh, if I push uh, or pull, this distance isn't changing. Okay. So, the statement of the principle, whenever I can connect my hand to my opponent, the connection creates a fulcrum. The rotation of my forearm around the fulcrum generates leverage. Whatever I can connect the lever to, I can move on the line of my elbow. Okay? So once again, the problem that I'm trying to solve is I need to get Shivang's arm out of the way. How am I going to do it? Whenever I can connect my hand to my opponent, I create a fulcrum. The con connection of my hand, uh, this fulcrum here, when I rotate my forearm around the fulcrum, I generate leverage. Whatever I connect the lever to, I can move along the line of my elbow. So using this lever, I can open up this inside space and now our hips are in a much better throwing position. So that's a pretty simple example of forearm torque from a standing position. Let's look at a, another example from the ground. Uh, we'll start in, a, in an ashi position. Okay. So imagine uh, we're, we somehow end up in this, in this position, and if I'm a toehold guy, uh, typically you might want to make a toehold like this. Now you can see my hand is connected to, uh, to Shivang's foot, but the rotation of my forearm has, has no effect. In order to finish this type of toehold, I need to make this connection. And now this hand becomes the fulcrum, this hand is providing the force, and pushing Shivang's toes towards his butt is what's going to eventually get the break. Uh, now, Imagine instead that I made my connection to Shivang's heel and I connect my forearm to the top of his foot. Now the rotation of my forearm is enough to get a break without even the second hand. So that's the rotation of my forearm. If I do make the connection, that just takes the leaks out of the system and this is a very very tight toe hold that requires almost no range of motion to finish. Okay, uh, third example of forearm torque is uh, say we're in a guard type position. Uh, so the proximate problem that I'm trying to solve is that I don't want him to connect his chest to my chest. So one way that I could do it, I kind of like this. I kind of like to connect right here a thumb post here and a thumb post here. The problem is all I'm doing is, is keeping him away from me. I'm not really uh, changing the game in any way. In order for me to mount counter offense, I need a better angle. So instead of this, this connection, what if instead I connect my hand to his shoulder? Once again, the principle applies. Whenever I connect my hand to my opponent, the connection forms a fulcrum. The rotation of my forearm around the fulcrum generates leverage. Whatever I connect the lever to, I can move in the direction of my elbow. Uh, and from this position, it, there's a lot more space to sink your underhook or whatever. Um, so that's the general statement of the principle. Uh, forearm torque is uh, one of those kind of hidden in plain sight physical skills that uh, is really important to jiu-jitsu. Um, there isn't a lot of prior art 
on forearm torque. Uh, it, like I said, it's kind of a dark corner. Uh, and today we're going to talk about a dark corner within the dark corner, which is using forearm torque uh, for strangles. Uh, so um, uh, we're going to take a look at that next.